for logical Excel functions. We're going to see here through four different practical examples how can we use each one of these logical Excel functions. We're going to start here with the if function and then we can move on to the end function and then or function and if arrow function. Let's start here with the first practical problem that I have here. And if you want to download this entire Excel file, you can click in the link in the description down below and download it 100% free, okay? And then you can follow here this step by step with me. In this first practical problem that I have here, uh, I need to use the if function to help me automate this task. So let's take a look here in this spreadsheet. I have here as the first column, the student's name, and then I have here all the four different grades that uh, each one of the students got. So test one, two, three, and four. And also here in the column F, I have the final grade that is basically the average of all the previous values that, are, that are each one of the students have. And here in the column G, I need to fill it in with the status. But uh, this status, I need to base on a criteria. So let's say if the students uh, got a grade that is greater than or equal to 5.5, for example, the student is approved. But if the student got a grade that is less than 5.5, I need to, the student is going to need to retake a test to maybe be able to improve his final grade. Okay, uh, but just think about it. If I need to fill in it manually, it's going to take a long time to the cows come wrong. So maybe it's not a good idea to fill it in it manually. Maybe it's a good idea to automate this task. And the if function, the if function can help me with that. So let's say here, the first student got 7.5. So he's approved. I can type it in here, approve it. Uh, and uh, this student, for example, 4.5 is need to retake the test, for example. But instead of doing it manually, I can use the if function to help me. Let's start here with the equal sign, and then if uh, I already have here a list of uh, four different functions, I'm gonna stick with the first option here, the if function, I'm gonna double click it, want you to select. The first thing that the if function is asking me is the logical test. And here for this practical situation, my logical test is gonna be if, this grade that I have right there, if this grade is, let's say, greater than 5.5, the student is approved. But here we have just a simple problem. Greater than 5.5. But let's say, if the student got 5.5, exactly 5.5, the student is approved or is need to retake the test? I think if the student got 5.5, he's approved. So instead of just using the greater than sign or less than sign, I need to append with the greater than the equal sign because that way I'm telling Excel to do. If the grade is greater than or equal to, okay? This is what we need to do here. So let me delete it. And then if this final grade right here is greater than or equal to 5.5, if so, comma, the student is approved. But to type it in here, the, this word, this sentence, I need to open quotations and then approve it and close quotations mark. Quote, unquote. Else, comma, if not, the students need to retake the test, for example, retake test. Close quotations mark, close parentheses, and then press enter. As you guys can see, we already automate this, the first row. But I can also click here in the down right corner of the cell, click, hold, and drag down. To make sure all the rows contain the same function and that way I done. Uh, the only two students that are gonna need to retake this test is this student right here and this one uh, down here. And this is how we can use the if function in Excel. And of course, you can also change the criteria. Here I am using 5.5 as criteria, but you can also change it. You can use, let's say, 7.0 as criteria, or you can use 6, whatever. You can use any number that as you need to. Now let's move on here for another function that is going to be the end function. And the end function is also a function that can help us automate tasks. But with the if function, we just use one criteria. Here with the end function, we're going to need to use, we want to use two criteria. But you also can use three, four, five, a hundred different criteria within the end function. I'm going to show you how can you do it with this practical example. 
So let's start reading here this text. So employees with more than six years in the company and without salary adjustment for more than three years gonna need to be on an appointment, for example, because the boss needs to talk with these people because maybe they're gonna receive a salary adjustment, okay? The, the boss is gonna improve their, their salaries. So let's start here. I have the employee's name, the admission date, how many years each one of the employees have been here in the company, and also I have the salary adjustment, the date, and how many years from the salary adjustment, the last one for each one of the employees that I have. And also I have here a column, a status, basically, where I need to fill it in with uh, some results. Equal sign, and one more time, to do it manually. Of course, I can do it. I can, yes, I can do it. But it's gonna take me a long time, so it's better to automate this task. And uh, despite the fact that we can also use the if function to automate tasks, here, we are not using the if function because we need to put more criteria here. Of course, you can use the if function within the if function within the if function a lot of times to input a lot of different criteria. But uh, here, I'm going to use the end function because it's a simple function to use and uh, it can have a lot of different criteria. So, equal sign and the function. Now, let me just double click here. I want you to select the end function is asking me the logical the first logical test, for example. And the first logical test that I need to do here is if the, the admission date, the years, how many years from this admission date, if the years is, let's say, more than or equal to, greater than or equal to six. And at the same time, I also need here the years of the, the last salary adjustment uh, be greater than or also equal to three, for example. If these two different criteria are met, if these two conditions are met, so it's gonna have here an appointment. So let's press enter here. And uh, the first result that I got here is false. Why? Let's say uh, the first value that I have here, 12, okay, it's a positive value because it's greater than six, for example, but my second condition that I have here uh, is not met because as you guys can see it's equal to zero but uh, at least I need here a three, three years to met the condition, to met the criteria. This is why I got here false as result. But uh, let's take a look in this in the, another in another rows. So I'm going to click here in the DAO icon of the cell and drag DAO to make sure all the rows contain the same function. Okay, I done and uh, I got here a true because this criteria is met, and also this criteria here is met. And when these two criteria are met at the same time, let's say the way I got, I always gonna get a true as result. So we basically done here with the end function. And another function that we can use is the or function, or function. The difference between the end and the or function is the end function, in the end function, all the criteria, all the conditions need to be met at the same time. If you have a hundred different criteria, all these a hundred different criteria need to be met. But if you are using the R function and you also have a hundred different criteria, 99 of these criteria are not met, for example. But if just one are met, is met, it's okay. You're gonna have a true as result here. So let's take a look what uh, this text is telling us. Low stock product less than 10 units or if it says buy it. So basically I have here again two different criteria. The first one is if a product in my stock is the quantity is less than 10 for example, so this is the first criteria. And the second one is if it says buy it. This is the second criteria that I have. Let's take a look here in this spreadsheet. I have as the first column the date and then the product, the quantity of each one of these products the total, Peter's notes, and here uh, I have the second condition, the second criteria, buy it, is Peter telling me to buy the product, and here in the column F, I need to fill it in with status. And one more time, if I do it manually, it's gonna take me a long time, um, I need to verify here. The quantity criteria are is less than 10, for example, and also I need to verify here, I need to see if uh, Peter's give me here a note, for example, buy it. So in this example right here, uh, Peter didn't write anything here, but I know that the quantity is less than 10, so I need to buy this product. 
Another example is, for example, here, 15 and 44 in stock, in quantity. But uh, I don't know, I know I don't need to buy these products because I have a lot in stock. But uh, Peters give me a note here that I need to buy it. Uh, maybe Peters see something that I didn't see. So maybe these products are selling more than usually. So more than usual, so I need to buy it. I'm going to select here this first cell in the status and then equal sign. I'm going to use here the OR function. I will not use here the end function because I don't want to the two criteria be met at the same time. If just one condition is met, okay, I need to buy it. Here, I don't need to wait till these two conditions are met. If just one is met, it's okay. So I need to buy it. Let me just double click here in the OR, one, two. And then my first logical test is gonna be, let's say here in the quantity. If this quantity right here is less than 10, for example, and this time I will not use the equal sign because if I have 10 units in stock, it's okay. I will not buy it. Just if it's nine or eight, you know, just if it's less than 10, for example. So if the first value is less than 10 or comma, Peters here give me a note that is gonna be equal to quote buy it exclamation and then unquote close parentheses enter. Okay, as you guys can see, I got a false as the first result, but I can double click here in the right corner of the cell, one, two, to make sure all the rows contain the same function now. And I can see what products that I'm gonna need to buy. So these products right here, and this one right here, this one, this one, this one, and so on, so on. So it's much easier to do with the OR function instead of manually check each one of the products that I have. The last function that we're gonna see here is the if arrow function. And uh, the if arrow function is a common function in Excel that you can use. You can basically append one function to the if arrow function. So you have basically the if arrow function and within the if arrow function, you can input, you can append another function. So basically the if arrow function is used with, is used with another function. Here I have a bunch of salesperson and then how much each one of the salesperson sold in each one of the weeks, the first week, the second week, the third week, and the fourth week. And here I calculate the, the total, the total sold, and here I also calculate the average per week. Per week. And I use, I'm using here the average function to do this math. But basically here I have a problem because there's a lot of employees here, a lot of salespersons that are not finished yet. So it's with this blank cells. I, have, I, I yet have no time to do it. So this is why there is a lot of empty, empty spaces here. And because of that, I got here an arrow that is basically telling me that uh, Excel is dividing it by zero. This is why I got here this arrow. But uh, let's say instead of using this arrow in my spreadsheet, I, wanted, I want to change this arrow to another text, for example. So this is where the if arrow function can help us. Instead of getting this arrow right here, div by zero, for example, I can instead input another type of text whatever text you want to input here. Let me just delete all this function right here. And I'm gonna just click here in this first function that I, where I'm using the average function, or I can do it again, for example. So let me delete it, equal sign, if arrow. Here we got the if arrow function. I'm gonna double click here on two to select. The first thing that the if, if arrow function is asking me is the value that I'm gonna use to check if there is or not a arrow in this function or in this value. As the value, I'm gonna use the average function. And whenever the average function get a arrow, for example, as result, I'm gonna change value if arrow to another thing. So inside here, the value, I'm gonna input the average function. I'm gonna append here this function. Double click, one, two, to select. Now I'm gonna use the average function that is gonna do the average of all the sales that I have here, the first week, the second week, the third week, and the fourth week. I can close parentheses and press comma. The value in the if arrow function is basically my average function. And then I press comma here, and now I am need to fill it in here, input the value if arrow. So whenever my average function got or get an arrow as result, uh, instead of getting this standard arrow that uh, Excel is gonna give to you, Instead, I want you to input here, let's say, open quotations mark, lacking 
information or something like this you know you can just input whatever text that i want you to use here unquote close quotations close parentheses and then press enter now we can drag down this function this formula click hold and drag down okay and as you guys can see instead of now getting this that arrow that he, that was telling us divide by zero now i got here this custom arrow lacking information for example and we're done so this is how can we use the if arrow function, the or function, the end function, and the if function in Excel. I hope you guys, this video can help you out. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow. Yes, every day has a new video. I see you there.